so very nice. And I'm 20 years old. I'm studying bachelor's in accounting and finance. I like money, first of all. And I like business. Yeah. My family lives right here in Makinge. Yeah, my mom, my big sister, my brother, and the main. Stay here. My name is Rona Nasuruga. Ah, Ronald is my younger brother. I live in Brookline, Massachusetts, and I'm from Kampala, Uganda. She moved there in 2011 with her fiancé. So currently he doesn't work, he just goes to college full time. Um, and, and I sent him some money for, I sent him money for tuition and upkeep. It's very difficult to find a job. In Uganda, it's so difficult. Even if you have your papers, even if you went to school, it's very difficult. Rona first sent me money through MoneyGram last year, 2013, in August. It was money for my tuition fees. MoneyGram and Western Union are great services, right? She needs to get money to Africa. You know, if you put it in an envelope, you're going to lose it. There's only one issue with these services, actually, two, right? One is the speed. The whole process takes like two days. And the other is the price, right? They're taking 10%. If she wanted to send $40, which would really help Ronald, that's gonna cost her $10, $15. So you're talking 30, 40%. Um, it's more expensive um, depending on when you want the other person to um, pick up the money. The banks in Uganda love to take money from the poor. So if you put in $100, in five months, it's going to be gone. Exactly. They just eat they, they, all kinds of fees. <laughs> all the fees that we fought about in the United States and basically threatened to put the banks out of business, they just tack on to Uganda. This was why did I buy the first Bitcoins, was to see if I could send money to her brother in Uganda. So I Facebooked her brother who got back right away. What, you're going to send me money? Hey, <laughs> you know. She was giving me all the instructions on Facebook. Yeah, Facebook. I sent him the 10 cents, right? He gets that. Now I know his multi-bit is working, so I sent him $30. And I said, as soon as I sent it, he's like, I got it. I go, you exchange that to Ugandan shillings and I'll send you more. I couldn't believe it that I can get money via the internet. I, I open up my account on the internet and there is money. So he slapped his laptop shut, put the USB stick in and ran off to the, uh, to the town to try and find someone who would purchase his Bitcoins. I told him I want to sell him Bitcoins. He gave me his wallet address number. Uh, Send to this wallet address number so that I give you hard cash, Ghana shillings. And that's how beautiful a remittance market can work. As long as there's any demand in Uganda, and there is, and it's hard for them to receive it, they become person-to-person -person exchanges. Right now in Uganda, so far, not a lot of people know about Bitcoin. Yeah. But for me, I use Bitcoin because I know somewhere I can sell Bitcoin. When my sister or my sister's fiance send me money for Bitcoin, I save a lot of money. A cell phone in Uganda for a year is cheaper than the banking fees you get for a year. Yeah. So Bitcoin fits right in there. Cell yeah. phones are really all their technologies. They listen to their music on it. They communicate with it. To add banking basically for free, well, that's a no-brainer. Yeah. I can send you money through Bitcoin the lowest rate possible and so instantly. You know, remittances is $500 billion a year in the world. I think it's $500 billion a year because it's so expensive. Okay, so imagine if it was, we could send 20 bucks. I think if we have a currency that's not controlled by the government, everyone will be equal. That's what I think.